India's decision on August 5th to reorganize the state of Jammu and Kashmir has led to numerous attempts by Pakistan to internationalize the Kashmir issue. After failing in its efforts to take up the matter at the UN Security Council, Pakistan took the Kashmir issue to the UN Human Rights Council this week and there was a face-off with India with both sides stating their position at the human rights body. In this week's edition of Worldview, we take a look at this issue and how it is going to play out in the coming weeks. To discuss the latest in the India-Pakistan tensions over the changes in Jammu and Kashmir, we are joined today by uh, former Ambassador Sharad Sabarwal, who has served in Pakistan and has also had uh, stints at uh, the UN in Geneva. So he is eminently you know, positioned to uh, comment on these issues. Uh, you must have watched what happened at the UNHRC uh, yesterday. Uh, India enunciated its position and uh, you know, there was also the Pakistani attack on whatever has happened. So how do you, uh, what do you make of the, uh, the positions adopted by the two sides? Well, you know, you uh, must uh, have noticed that from day one after these changes were made, Pakistan's attempt has been to internationalize this issue. They started with a with warmongering, saying, you know, this threatens peace, uh, which could involve nuclear dimension and so on. Went to the UN Security Council, didn't get much traction there. You would have also noticed that barring Pakistan, China and a ritual statement from the OIC Secretariat, Nobody, no other country has criticized the changes as such. The focus of international reaction has been on the restrictions imposed in JNK. Uh, and therefore, it was expected that Pakistan will try and uh, play up that angle at the UN Human Rights Council. And going forward, they'll do it in the UN General Assembly also. That's exactly what they did. Uh, and it's good that we placed uh, our position on the record very clearly. Uh, this is normally how things happen at the Human Rights Council. Uh, going forward, I don't think Pakistan will have much success there either. Uh, they can get some limelight, some publicity, you know, make all kinds of allegations and so on. Uh, but to expect that they can get a resolution passed against India, I don't think that's going to happen. I would be very surprised that they get the required numbers uh, for that in the 47 members body. Uh, in fact, they, they may hardly get any support for that kind of thing or for setting up of a commission of uh, uh, inquiry. Uh, so I think um, we, sh we may expect, you know, maybe a little more exchanges um, is to continue for two weeks. Pakistan still has some time to present a resolution if they wish to. Uh, but I don't think uh, they'll, they'll get any, any uh, success there either. But, you know, as you mentioned, the UN General Assembly is coming up. And it's, uh, it's pretty obvious if you looked at the performance of uh, uh, Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi yesterday. Uh, it's clear that they are going to follow the same trajectory, the same kind of positioning uh, when the UN General Assembly comes up. Well, this is uh, nothing new. They have done it many times earlier also. They have been doing it in the recent years. They have done it uh, earlier. Even when I was High Commissioner, I think in odd year, 2010, when there was trouble in Kashmir, they made a very strident statement at the General Assembly. Uh, and we'll, we'll give our response, and that's uh, where it, uh, it ends. Uh, let, me, let me say here, according to me, our primary challenge has not been international reaction. Look, as I told you, whatever reaction came our way was largely on these uh, restrictions, and that was muted. Uh, I think our primary challenge is the situation on the ground. If we get it right, as I hope uh, we will, and let's hope we will, uh, then whatever reaction has been there will die out. If, God forbid, we don't for some reason, well, let's hope that doesn't happen, uh, then it could take a little uh, sharper uh, tone. Uh, don't also forget that the High Commissioner for Human Rights uh, issued a report for the first time in 2018, first time in a yes, long period, long time. Uh, on human rights in Kashmir and asked for a commission on, uh, of inquiry. That was Radhal Hassan of Jordan. And India rejected that report and also hinted that he was biased. Um, that may have been the case. Uh, we don't know the circumstances under which that report came. Another one came in July 
uh, July this year. Now that kind of thing uh, uh, could keep on happening. So it essentially depends on the situation on the ground. Now you mentioned also an, another interesting thing was, you know, the, the concern, the growing concern within the world community about the restrictions in Jammu and Kashmir. Moving forward, what do you think the Indian government should do to address these concerns? Well, you know, uh, as you know, especially in the context of the UN uh, Human Rights Council meeting, a very concerted effort has been mounted by the Ministry of External Affairs, starting with the minister himself um, at the official level, our heads of mission in various missions to explain India's position. Eventually, they can explain what is there on the ground. Uh, and you know whatever uh, position has been taken uh, by the government that's been put across uh, and I think we, we need to continue that effort in a more uh, concerted manner uh, to explain what were the circumstances I mean the basic point uh, that has been made as I understand <clears throat> by the government is that uh, we wanted to save lives at all cost and therefore we have had to place uh, some restrictions uh, you know, to make sure that, uh, you know, there was no trouble and lives are not lost. Uh, that, I think, will go down well up to a point. Uh, but, you know, beyond a point to say that uh, to protect the right to life of people, you have to curb liberties for an indefinite period, uh, right to liberty. Uh, that doesn't sound very logical. Uh, so, as I said, uh, in addition to the concerted efforts uh, that are being made, and probably we should intensify them a little, because General Assembly is coming, and if the situation continues for a little more time, uh, you know, we'll, uh, we'll have to ensure that the international community is uh, kept informed. Uh, but going forward, I think our, our success at the international level, as I said earlier, would depend upon what happens on the ground. The government says that these are temporary restrictions and I have no reason not to believe them. I believe them. Uh, and let's hope uh, that gradually as they are lifting those restrictions, uh, things would come to some degree of normalcy, uh, which then will make the task of our diplomats even easier uh, to explain our position. One quick final question. How worried are you about uh, you know, Pakistan making more efforts to meddle in Jammu and Kashmir? Uh, well, you know, my uh, view is that uh, this 370 move hasn't solved our Pakistan uh, problem. Uh, they are uh, meddling in Kashmir, they are questioning the accession of Kashmir. Uh, their terror card was quite independent of, you know, the autonomy of the state or the status, special status they, they, uh, the state had under the Indian constitution. Uh, I think uh, uh, terrorism today, Pakistan has a very dub always had a dubious case on Kashmir. And today they have very little traction in the international community. Frankly, the only instrument in their hand to stay relevant uh, to Kashmir is terrorism. Uh, again, it also uh, emanates from the nature of the Pakistani state, the dominance of the Pakistan army, the fact that they need an external threat and bogey. Uh, to you know, sustain their primary uh, prime position in the Pakistani polity, um, and you know, terrorism comes in handy there. Also, to tie down Indian forces uh, in Kashmir, uh, so we should expect them to continue to use that card. They are in a difficult situation because of financial action task force, etc. But we need to be very alert. Um, and I think they will. They they may try something adventurous going forward. Ambassador Sabarwal, thank you so much for your time and for those wonderful insights.